Black Ops Zombies, a game mode that has brought all of us many a joy over the years and for some many good memories that we still look back at even till this day. With this in mind, I decided to go back through all the Black Ops maps and pick out one component from each of these. Now this might not necessarily be the best thing to come from each map, but closer to something that stood out to me personally throughout the years. So let's start off from the very beginning, which starts with my favourite thing from none other than Kino the Totem. Now Kino the Totem for many was also their first map ever, with a massive amount of the zombies player base actually starting at Kino in its introduction in Black Ops 1. Now there are many things that you can think of when it comes to this map, but to me personally, I will never forget the excitement and joy that I got for the first time when I found none other than the Thunder Gun. Yes, I know, it's quite a basic thing when you think about it, but realistically, the Thunder Gun at this time was such a good introduction to a new Wonder Weapon. I mean, this thing was amazing. If you ever thought that you were in a tough situation that you couldn't get out of, this was your lifeline. This thing kept so many of us alive in those tight moments that otherwise would have cost us either a down or a game over. And also on top of that, every time you fire this weapon, that noise that it makes when you fire the bullet is just amazing. And that for me is why the Thunder Gun is the first thing that I think of when it comes to Kino to Toten. Up next, we have none other than Five. Now, there are a few things that you can think about when it comes to Five. For a lot of people, it could be the intro cutscene, and I wouldn't blame them because that scene is amazing. Just a storm, Dick. Sit down. But for this video, I'm actually going to go with none other than our new dog round boss, which was the Pentagon Thief. From the second that that round started, the music changes, the scenery changes, and all of a sudden you notice that this isn't going to be no normal zombie round. Now this dude just comes out of nowhere, starts chasing you down. Can you imagine how much of a shock that is for your first time? None of us knew what was happening. And then he comes up to you and steals your weapon. And then he just runs off with it like it's nothing. And all of a sudden, you're the one chasing the Pentagon Thief, not him. And to top the round off, killing him gives you the max ammo. And if you can kill him earlier without him touching you, you also get extra rewards, which is, in my opinion, a nice little addition. And hence why I decided to pick the Pentagon Thief. Moving on to our next map of Black Ops 1, we have none other than Ascension. And for this one, I think it was a very easy pick because I decided to pick the rocket takeoff sequence. Now this is a step to get the pack punch machine up and running and honestly when you go up to that top roof and you set off that rocket it's just amazing to watch it head off in space but you're not done there not only do you get pack punch when this happens but you can also destroy the rocket if you have the right weapon i cannot count the amount of times i have stood there watching that thing take off while I blast it with a ray gun, waiting for it to just blow up before it even reaches anywhere near space. And to this day, I will still do it. And for me, that is why it is so memorable. We move on to our next map, which is Call of the Dead. A very special map in my opinion. And what can make it more special than its very own George Romero. This man is the definition of zombies. I mean, the likes of Dead of the Night, the hit film. He deserves a spot in this list, let alone for the fact that it gives the map an extra challenge, meaning for the first time ever, you cannot really simply sit and camp in a corner. You have to constantly be aware of this man and the bullet sponge that he is. And if you do manage to kill him, you are rewarded for the troubles you go through. Mind you, there is always the downfall that he does return the next round, but I still think he deserves a very special place in COD Zombies history. And for that, he goes on the list. Next up on the list, we have Shangri-La. And now, whilst not my favorite map, one thing I can admire about this map is the Eclipse mode. When you're doing the Easter egg and you switch from day to night, this map has a complete different feeling to it. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the ambience and the setting of this map during the day, but when you change it to night, it just has a completely different vibe for it. And for me, that deserves a mention. Last but not least, on our Black Ops 1 adventure is none other than Moon. And all I can say is 
there is no better way to end this game than the easter egg ending itself. I'm sorry, but this ending has to be one of the best ones in Black Ops history. And I'm sure that most of you will agree with that. But seeing the rockets head towards Earth and then hitting the Earth and blowing it up, leaving it in smithereens, was one hell of an experience. Especially when you could go back to Area 51 and see the damage you've caused. Truly amazing. On top of that, it also sets us up for the whole of Black Ops 2. So in my opinion, it deserves a top spot and a top mention. Speaking of Black Ops 2, this is where we transition into our next game and we start with none other than Transit. Transit to me again was not one of my preferred maps but I do appreciate its ambition and that is why one of the more interesting things it added was a double sided easter egg for the first time ever. Now don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that this was one of the best easter eggs I've ever done but the fact that you can now choose between Maxis or Richthofen which way you want to go, what way you want to do things. I can appreciate where they were trying to go with this and what they were trying to create. And for that reason, it's going on the list. Moving on from transit, we climb all the way up to none other than die rise. And whilst there's many cons to this map, like falling off it, one thing you cannot ignore from this map is its wonder weapon, the Sliquifier. I don't really think I need to go into too much detail about this gun, but my oh my, especially before this thing was patched, it was an absolute beast and who knows maybe one day we'll get to use that bad boy again slipping and sliding our way off the tower we end up back in a very familiar setting which is nuketown zombies now for many this map was not the one but having gone from our simple days of the likes of nafta and totem for rucked simplicity was no longer a black ops zombies strong point but that is exactly what i like from this map this map is a sole survival mode map. It is built like a Nahda and Toten. It is simply built to survive. And yes, whilst it does not have any sort of Easter egg or progression like we are used to nowadays, I quite enjoyed a little throwback to the good old days and hence why the simplicity of this map is what I really enjoyed. Next up on our list is Mob of the Dead a monumental part of Zombies history. And we all know why, it's an amazing map. But one of the main things I really enjoyed was actually the addition of the afterlife. Fitting in with the theme of the map and the story that the map is trying to portray, the afterlife is a cool and exciting addition that basically replaces Quick Revive. If you enter the map, straight away you notice there is no Quick Revive machine, but instead you have to bring yourself back to life by traveling through the afterlife, returning to your original body form and actually zapping yourself back to life. And on top of that, you can actually intentionally take yourself into the afterlife mode at the cost of risking your one and only Quick Revive option to complete and unlock parts of the story easter egg whilst also gaining benefits such as double points and max ammos. For me that was a great addition to mob and I thoroughly enjoyed it. On to our next map of Black Ops 2 which is none other than Buried. One of my most memorable parts from this map is actually the witch's house. Now I remember the first time I loaded up into this map. While there were many things that caught my eye I always remember staring down the witch's house and it always gave me a certain chill whenever I looked at it. You see this massive mansion just carved into the landscape, giving off this haunting vibe to it. And whilst it looks scary from far away, you head towards the building and all of a sudden you start hearing noises. You're starting to wonder if you've made the right choice going towards here. You take your first steps inside, and it's not long before you realize that you're being chased. And you're not just being chased by any normal zombie like you were before. You're being chased by witches. And these witches are out to get you. They want your perks and they want your money. And if you don't get out of here quick, then they are not going to stop coming for you. And personally for me, one of the coolest things running around a building, especially for the first time, trying to find a way through. You're lost. You don't know where you're going. You go into the main bedroom and all of a sudden... The bookcase moves and it reveals this secret entrance. To me, that lit up my eyes as the young teenager I once was playing this game mode. And that is why the Witch's House goes on the list. We move on to our final map of Black Ops 2. And how could we not 
end on such a good map, which is none other than Origins. Now, I think you can all imagine where I'm going with this, but the staffs of Origins are arguably one of the best additions to any Black Ops Zombies game. Even to this day, the staffs are one of the most popular weapons in the game, and the amount that they get mentioned is honestly ridiculous. So realistically, I don't think I need to explain myself too much when I say that the staffs from Origins are top tier and deserve to be on this list. On to a new era of zombies. November 6, 2015, a brand new Black Ops releases in Black Ops 3, and we are introduced with none other than Shadows of Evil. Whilst this map was very, very different to anything we had ever experienced before, the first thing that I believe caught pretty much everyone's eye was the beast mode. All of a sudden, every round, you could summon this beast in which you could traverse the map, turn on power, and unlock new areas in a whole new different way. This brought about a new way of playing the game that we'd never seen before, and honestly, in my opinion, was a great addition. Hence why we start off Black Ops 3 with no better option than the beast mode. Next up on the list though is none other than The Giant, a remake of one of our original maps. Now on this map, I decided to go with the reimagination of the Reese itself. Now you might be thinking to yourself, but there's not much difference in the map. I mean, it's a literal remake. And yes, you may be right, but I believe the way they have remade this map has brought out the best in the Reese. Whilst the details that have been changed are minute, I think it was just about right, especially when setting up the new story that it brought a brand new life to the map. If you would like a further detailed explanation of this, then I feel like there is no better person to explain this than the Smith plays. The link for the video will be in the description, but he very much sums up why the giant works so well in reimagining, and that is why I decided to pick it. We now move on to arguably one of the best maps of all time, none other than the Isendrak. And whilst this map has a lot of good features, I'm sure you can imagine where we're going with this one. It's none other than the bows. This map took a page straight out of Origins books and basically replaced the staffs with four different types of bows, all with their unique powers and abilities, just like the staffs. I cannot tell you how popular these bows are and how much love they get from the community and hence why I decided once again to pick these bows. After this, we were given a completely different look of a new map, Zetsubo no Shima. This was a very interesting pick for me, but personally, one of the things I enjoyed was the ability to actually become a spider. Yes, you heard me, a spider. A cool little side easter egg that you could complete in which you could actually become one of the spiders that come to fight you in the replaced dog rounds. Whilst not the most powerful ability, it was a cool and different little aspect of the game that you could take in and means that you can switch up your game and have a bit more fun with it and that's why it's on the list. Now we all remember the first time we dropped into Gorilla Krovi. You probably remember the intro to it. The song Ace of Spades playing by Aerosmith. That was a great introduction to this map. But for me, one of the most memorable parts was actually seeing Nikolai in the giant suit. I remember it to this day. He stood there fighting all the zombies, having a great time, and it just pans in on him, having a good old sip of his vodka, just like the good old days. And that is a memory that stuck with me since this day. And that is why I decided to pick it. And just like that, we move on to our final map of Black Ops 3, which is of course, Revelations. Now this might be a map full of previous parts of good old maps like Kino, Mob, The Ruck, Shangri-La, etc. But one part that stands out for me is actually an original part of the map, which is the Pack-A-Punch area. From the very start of the map, you load in and before you even get a chance to spot anything else, you notice the Pack-A-Punch machine is right in front of you, there for the taking. That's easy. This map is giving it to me already. All of a sudden, it gets taken away by the big boy himself. You now know that you've got to chase this guy down if you want pack a punch and the way you zap him into place and then just enter his mouth like it's nobody's business just to run around inside him shooting his heart or whatever it is just to get your weapon pack -a punched it's amazing and that's why i'm signing off black ops 3 with this cool little memory after entering revelations pack punching our gun the apothecary decided to chew us up and spit us out into none other 
than Black Ops 4 and specifically Voyage of Despair. Whilst not one of my favourite maps, one of the things I find most memorable is actually part of an easter egg in which you can see a flying car going around a map. Completely random, because why would you even have a flying car in the first place, let alone in the middle of the ocean? Who knows? But out of all the bad things that this map did, that is one of the things I did enjoy. Whilst Voyage might have not been the best way to start Black Ops 4, 9 did make up for this. It was a much more fun and exciting experience for me personally, and one of the things I found the most exciting was actually the way in which you unlock the pack punch. Think of it this way, you've just been chucked into an arena. You're fighting for your life, killing these zombies one by one, staying alive. You want to pack punch your weapon? Then you need to stay within the arena rules and you need to fight four champions of the gods. If you can defeat these champions, you can take their heads as a reward. You stick them on the pillars and in return, you get the pack punch machine. Personally, I think that is an awesome way to unlock pack punch and that is why it's going on the list. Our next map for Black Ops 4, however, is Dead of the Night. Now I must admit, this is a map that I do not play a lot, so my knowledge of this map is fairly limited. But one of the first things that does come to mind when I play this map is the massive statue in the main hall. Now whilst Black Ops 4 did make its mistakes, I must admit visually, I was very impressed with this game. And seeing that statue there is one of the reasons why. I mean, it just looks amazing. So that is why I decided to pick it. Onto our final Chaos Story map, we have Ancient Evil. Now, there are a few good things about this map, don't get me wrong. But the main thing that sets it apart to me is the setting of the map and the complete ambience that this map brings. Everything on this map just feels like it's in the right place. The colours of the map pop out in the right way. Everything looks amazing. It's based off the ancient city of Delphi and you can tell because it looks exactly like it's set out to be. And don't even get me started on the underworld. That just adds another layer to this map, that contrast from the top half of the map when you enter in. It is honestly a very beautiful looking map. And if anything, I'm just sad that they ended the chaos story there. But that is what makes Ancient Evil stand out to me. We move on from the Chaos Story and we actually move in to all of the classic remakes of Black Ops 4. Where better to start with Classified? Personally, I really enjoy Classified, but one of the main things I really liked is the introduction to Area 51. Whilst Area 51 to us is not a new concept at the time, I believe that it was a nice little addition to this map. Think about it, you want to go pack punch, so you think you already know the steps. You go down to the bottom, you turn the power on, you start activating the defcons. Once you get to defcon 5, you go through that teleporter, thinking you're ready to pack punch. All of a sudden, the pack punch machine is gone. All that remains is rubble from the once powerful pack punch machine that sat there and all that's left is a part that you can pick up. Now you know it's not as simple as you think. You gotta go start looking for more parts. Once you do, you realise that you actually can get a new teleport to none other than the Area 51 base where the original moon pack punch machine is sat there waiting for you. I think this is a cool little throwback to moon and also a cool little addition to classified. Teleporting ourselves away from classified though, we move on to Blood of the Dead. Again, a remake that necessarily didn't go down as well as the first one, but one of the things I did enjoy that got added into this map was actually the catwalk. Now, I know what you're thinking, but this is one of the most annoying parts. You have to run through it, you're getting attacked. It's just not a fun experience, but that is why I actually disagree. The element of fear running through that catwalk, worrying if zombies are gonna attack you from in front, worrying if they're gonna chase you from behind. And even if you are skillful enough to defeat these zombies coming at you from both angles, you still have to worry about those zombies sticking their arms out and trying to kill you from the sides. I quite enjoy that experience. And that's why it's come down as a memorable part of Blood of the Dead. Now we move on to none other than Alpha Omega. And whilst I was previously praising the likes of Black Ops 2 Nuketown for its simplicity, I'm actually going against that for this map and saying that the expansion of Nuketown actually benefited this map in this instance. Now don't get me wrong, I still believe that the simplicity of Nuketown Zombies is a major benefit for that map but for many they simply didn't like the fact that there was nowhere to go. I mean 
You could always see the bunkers in the back of the houses and I bet you always thought, what if I could go down there? It would be amazing if I could get down the bunker and there was an extra area. Well that is exactly what you get from this map. You get the classic Nuketown experience with the addition of so much more. You get that bunker experience, you get to see what's down there finally. And I will always remember when I loaded in to Alpha Omega for the first time, I was so excited to see what was in that bunker. On to our final Black Ops for map which is none other than tag the totem a callback to of course the classic call of the dead now one of the most memorable things for me on this map was none other than seeing for the first time our good old friend pablo marinus you go up to the top of that lighthouse and somebody starts talking to you you don't know who it is at first originally just being known as the hermit but over time we figure out that this is actually pablo marinus one of the original experiments that we thought was long forgotten but it turns out whilst others thought he had died he actually survived and has been stuck here ever since now i think that is awesome and a good way to end Black Ops 4. We are on to the last edition of Black Ops, which is none other than Cold War. And we start with a classic die machine. Now for me, this was actually a route back into the Call of Duty Zombies franchise. Having not really got on with Black Ops 4, I decided to take a bit of a break. And it wasn't until I played Die Machine that I remembered the love that I have for Call of Duty Zombies. And one of those reasons was experiencing the D ie shockwave this gun honestly is one of my favorite wonder weapons of all time a combination of the thunder gun and the pacifier you can shoot a wave of energy to kill off zombies and throw them back whilst also being able to drain their health to recharge your weapon any weapon that doesn't require you to buy ammo but instead regain it from killing zombies is a massive win in my opinion and whilst you can upgrade this wonder weapon to its four different elements i personally much more prefer to use the original form and hence why it has a special spot in this list we move on next to firebase c in my opinion one of my least favorite maps from cold war but i must admit the dimensional breach assault waves were pretty cool i will remember running through the easter egg and all of a sudden hearing that noise that notification telling me that there is an assault wave incoming. I start to panic, I see the timer. I run over there and I realize I can get a cruise missile. Okay, that's cool. Why would I need a cruise missile though? I can't imagine there's that much trouble coming through when all of a sudden you see those dimensional portals open and waves after waves of zombies come through. You realize very quickly that you need that missile and it is a fight to survive. And that is one thing I think that Firebase C did very well. We move on from Firebase C onto a very different game mode for zombies which is the addition of outbreak now this is something very different to our classic round based zombies and whilst it wasn't perfect i will admit the ambition of this map is what kept me interested in it don't get me wrong this game mode is not perfect but the ambition that they had going forward with this can be seen in the likes of modern warfare 3 zombies and again whilst not perfect and still needs work i think could be a good addition to the zombies game mode. I don't want it to replace round based, but I feel like it could be a good addition coming in the future. And hence why the ambition of Call of Duty Zombies Outbreak has been added to the list. We do move back to round base after this though with Mauer de Toten. And again, there are many things that I liked in this map, but one of the most memorable things for me personally is the addition of Klaus. This little dude was a good little friend on this map. From the second you make him, he was a killing machine. He helped you however he could. And on top of this, this bad boy could stop that train that kept on trying to hit you. How cool is that? And when it all comes down to it, this dude was willing to sacrifice his life to make sure that you completed your mission. I still miss you, Klaus. Come back. After the heartbreak of Klaus, we move on to our final map, which is Forsaken. And for me, the first thing that pops into my mind when I think of this map is its wonder weapon, the Chrysalax. This thing is incredibly powerful. And at first glance, you might think this thing is just a swinging axe. It also transforms into a gun. And again, it's a weapon that you don't necessarily need to get a max ammo for because if you do run out of ammo, the axe swing is still powerful enough to kill zombies, which in return will give you the ammo you need for the weapon. A very good weapon in my opinion and a very good addition to the map. And so I'm gonna end off this 
list with the addition of the good old Chris Lux. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is one memorable thing from each Call of Duty Black Ops map. My question to you is, what are the most memorable things that pop into your head when you think of any Black Ops Zombies map? And I will be very interested to know so let me know in the comments. Apart from that, if you have enjoyed the video, then let me know. Leave a like on it and also subscribe while you're there. That would be greatly appreciated. But that is where I am going to leave you for now. I hope you have enjoyed and I shall see you all in the next one.